Hi Libra, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for May 2018 and Libra. We are about to shake up your intimate life. We're going to shake up your money a little bit this month. Not even this month. We're about to shake up your money. Let's just be really honest about that. Uranus is coming into Taurus. This is going to make waves in your eighth house. But I do want to say this right off the bat. When Uranus comes into a financial space, it can create instability right? So things could be unsettling. You could be unsure about some things, but I really feel like there's this beautiful um, collaboration between Uranus coming into Taurus this month at the same time that we're having a new moon in Taurus this month, which actually sets you up for some success <laughs> and some sex. Yes, and some sex as well, because the eighth house is the house of sex. And I definitely think for some of you Libras, you may be wanting to explore and experiment and maybe expand your sexuality. And that is not just through the act of sex, but that is in a lot of different ways, movement, creativity, addressing fears, all of these kinds of things fall into it. Anywhere you have a joint connection that is deep, right? Intimacy, which means you see into me, whether it be with, a, with the IRS, with um, a financial, company, loans, taxes, mortgages, inheritance, another person, whatever it is that you have a joint situation, there's certainly going to be some shakeups and some changes this month. But what I also want to tell you too, is that while of these are coming around, I do think they're going to be mostly positive for you and they can put you in a position to get so far outside of your own comfort zone that you find that you have a new plan you hadn't even considered. For many of you too, um, you could find yourself wanting to um, invest in things that maybe you hadn't been wanting to invest in before. I'm telling you right now, if you do not have an investment portfolio, you haven't talked about investing or learning about those things, this could be the time where you're looking at things that are agricultural, technological, um, Bitcoin or one of the other cryptocurrencies out there, something like that. These could start to snag your attention and you could even just be investing your time in starting to learn about them because this whole deal is about getting you connected and changing the intimacy of how you're connected to different sources in a different way. So Uranus is great for that. Now let's jump in here and let's talk through May so I can get you into learning about what's happening in May and out to enjoying it, okay? Right here at the beginning of the month on the third, we've got Mercury leaving its final shadow zone. Now, this is, remember, the retrograde is a part of four phase, four stage phase that happens when a planet goes retrograde. Shadow, retro, direct, shadow. So Mercury is leaving this last part of the shadow, which is great for us because it means that he's full force, frontal, we've got his blessings, we've got the full energy of Mercury behind us, which is phenomenal. We've got a lot of communication that's got to be happening. We're going to be making new decisions. We want our communication planet giving us full blessings. So he's full on and that's good for you to note. Now on the 12th of May, Mars, who's hanging out in conjunct with Pluto as we start the month, is going to be entering into his shadow phase. So what this means is, yes, we still have the benefit of Mars, okay? He's not gonna go retrograde until June, but what is happening is he is starting to slow down pack his bags and get ready for his retrograde trip. So you may notice that your desire has waned just a little bit. You're like, why am I not as interested in pursuing this? Why am I trying to force this thing to, to happen and it seems to not be happening? It's not gonna be as intense in May, but you do wanna be mindful that Mars is entering that slowdown, okay? On the 13th, Mercury is moving into Taurus. On the 15th, we've got the new moon happening at 24 degrees of Taurus. We've got Venus in Gemini. And also, we have got Uranus coming into Taurus as well. So this eighth house gets just lit up. And why I think this is so phenomenal is because the way you've been interacting with your finances or your intimacy is going to get shifted in a pretty radical way. And even though it creates a little bit of flux, like I said, I think it actually puts you in a position to have a much better sex life, sexuality, financial life, debt life, right? Like you could be clearing some of that up. It puts you in a position to have it be so much better even as we get towards November, okay? Now that new moon is going to be a phenomenal place for you to plant these seeds of intention. Do you want to study astrology? That's a very deep, intimate skill to be able to have. Um, 
Are you digging through something with a psychologist or some kind of counselor? This is a wonderful energy. Plant those seeds of intention for healing here, right? In the eighth house, I always like to hear people plant seeds of intention for healing and exploration because this is a beautifully abundant house to be able to feel empowered. This is our empowered house. It's ruled by Pluto. We transform so we can become emp empowered. So definitely lean into that, okay? Now, also with Uranus here in the eighth house, house. Um, I do not want you to be freaked out if you do decide that you want to experience some things that are really kind of way out of your realm when it does come to sexuality, okay? Uranus is a pretty kinky planet, right? So if you want to try some stuff, and if you are so single, it burns to mingle, um, you can experiment by yourself. You can question these things on your own. There is nothing that says you can't have a delicious sex life, intimate life, by being by yourself. There, there is nothing. Trust me, I was single for a long time and look at how happy I am. So you have a lot to offer to your current relationship of you with you, whether you're single, coupled up, or whatever's happening. Now, on the um, 16th, we've got Mars moving into the fifth house. And I further love this because this is a very romantic house. You can be attracted to someone who's very, very different from you. Mars is still on go. Mars likes the fifth house. He likes desire. He likes play. He likes exploration. He likes, ex uh, he likes to express himself, right? So this could also be a place where you're finding yourself playing um, experiencing some people that are very, very different from you. Maybe you even meet someone online. Something like that could be happening. Now, for some of you too, I will tell you with Uranus moving into Taurus, this always creates the question of value. So looking at Mars over here in Aquarius, just knowing that Uranus is sitting in that backdrop, if you have children, have the conversation about what's happening online. Okay, I think it's a really important thing to be mindful of what's happening with your children in the online space. Okay, so make sure you have that conversation. Now, the other thing I'm thinking about is when we get here to the 19th of the month, Venus moves into Cancer. She's very comfortable here. They really like being together and it's moving into your 10th house. So it heads up to the top of the chart beautiful this gives the professional life a really nice boost right because venus is going to bring diplomacy she's going to bring some magnetism up here a little bit of sensuality maybe even but what's going to happen is she's going to stay there all the way until june so this is the time you could see money coming to you. You could get a raise. You could ask for a raise. You could get a promotion. You could decide that you want to approach someone who is maybe, I don't want to say an authority figure, but in a position of authority that can maybe help you get something done on a project you're working on because not everybody is still working. Some of us friends are retired, right? And okay, but maybe there's a project you want to work on or work towards. Maybe there's something you're interested in. Venus is really going to help bringing the consideration in because it's like you're talking, you're speaking, you're doing your thing and it's just coming off like butter. This is a wonderful energy for that. For some of you too, I'm telling you right now, for some of you, it will bring romance at work. Now on the 29th of the month, we have the full moon happening at eight degrees of Sagittarius. We've also got Mercury moving into Gemini. The sun is now in Gemini. So we are lighting up a lot of space where you get to expand. Your thinking gets to expand as well with the full moon being here in the third house. You could be ending a contract. You could be ending an agreement. You could re be a, an agreement or a situation that has needed a decision could be reaching culmination at this point. Because remember, the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. This could also be a time too, or for some of you, you could be graduating or you could be ending an educational thing or a trip. You could be planning a trip. There's a lot of trip information, trip and travel information that could be going on here as well that will end and give you space to start something brand new pretty good. I think it's going to be a good month. I'm really interested to see what's happening for you around this whole eighth house vision. So please keep me posted. Tell me about your experience with Uranus as you are going through it. All right. Put it in the comment section down below. I hope to see you at $3 Thursdays where we will be talking about Chiron in Aries. You can click in the description box down below and get signed up as well. Astrology 103 is open and that class starts in September and is almost full. So if you want to join us and talk about synastry and compatibility, grab your spot. I love you guys so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month. Bye!